Richie and Kapuna Show. With me, Heather Gordon. to the Richie and Tapuna Show. Hello, everybody. I would like to thank our beautiful studio audience for coming out tonight. Thank you, everybody. Yay. And to all of our viewers at home that tuned in tonight, all two of them, <laughs> one of which is my mom. -um. Thanks, mom. -um. <laughs> the I other one's laid up in the hospital and can't reach the remote, but okay. whatever the reason, thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about some stories that were recently in the Do you have news. any local stories in those? Local stories in the news. Um, I'm sure everybody heard about this one. There's a Kensington Strangler yes. out there. We did hear this. Um, two girls were found dead. And it's within the same vicinity. One of, one, the third victim came after these bodies were found and told police that she was also assaulted and taken to another mm. location. Wow. Um, We're uh, a little confused as to what's going on at this point. Everybody's trying to get together and we were doing a march earlier and just, I guess everybody's just mourning together and coming together as people in Kensington always do in a time of need. I mean, this community is full of people that have lived here their whole entire lives, grew up here. And when there's something wrong, everybody comes together and supports one another. And that's one of the good things about living in Kensington. Hi, I'm here with Dara, one of the victim's mothers, Elaine. Could you please tell us something about Elaine that nobody else knows as of yet? She was caring and she would do anything for you. Uh, she loved animals. He is a loser cowboy. I know, loser! I know. As, as the mother of a cowboy oh, man, what does that feel like? <laughs> <laughs> I think that car said it all. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cowboy suck. It's going to be a long day for you, right? How does it feel? I mean, it's almost like wearing a sign that says, I'm a communist. I know. <laughs> I know. But he is my son. He is your son and he's still love him. Well, you know, he, he's, he's still my friend and I love him. But I know. he was sneaky. We were friends for like three or four months, and then he went to beat up a car with a sledgehammer. So I gave him this big intro of, wait, you see my friend, he's huge, he's going to come out here, he's going to hit this car with a sledgehammer, and the car is going to blow up. And he takes off his sweatshirt, and he's wearing a cowboy shirt, and my whole audience turned on me, and I said, I'm sorry, wrong big guy, I don't even know this guy. Serial <laughs> groper. Serial groper. He... He's, he's groping Captain Crunch and no, Rabbit. He's, he's groping women. And... Oh. It's been up to this point, probably by this airs it'll be more, but four or five women have been groped at this point all around the Spring Garden area. Kind of Spring Garden section of the city, huh? Yeah, and I know what it feels like to be groped. I've been groped many times in my life, but one in particular, um, I was walking home from taking my son to school, pushing my coach, the baby was in the coach, and the guy walked past me and he even Which said baby? hi. Darren. No, I'm saying and you have like 10 kids. Not, not at this time. I gave most of my money. Um, so as I walked past him and he said hi, I just got a weird feeling and I turned around to look and sure enough, there he was right behind me and he groped me. Groped you. And I ran backwards with the coach and chased him all the way around the corner and he ran down the driveway. But, you know, I mm. was hoping to catch him but didn't. Well, you might have wanted his phone lower. number <laughs> just to, you know, ask him if he wanted to buy me a drink before <laughs> the next grouping. Before the next but uh, why would a guy do that? Like a straight walking, seeing a strange you girl. Asking me I'm, a I'm guy. asking I you. Go well, open people. I because don't. I think people think that if you have a big ass, that it's there to be touched. And just because I have a big ass, I want people to touch it. And I can remember a time when you were a groper, as a matter of fact. Do you remember? Do you know what no. I'm talking about? Yeah. In uh, what, like first or second grade? You groped that. my butt and I had to punch you in Maybe the Maybe there's a sign on your back then. And <laughs> gave you a bloody nose. I know a lot of people out there remember that. I don't so you were a groper. So I can't what, be a witness why would that. you do that? Why would you do that to somebody a stranger? Give it a I don't know. 
Uh, that's Chino's account of the events, and uh, with us now is Greg Butcheroni. Can you come over here, Greg, please? And uh, can you explain who this man is here and what he does for you guys and that he has had a background check and why his civil rights were taken away from him because he was practically demanded. And I know the things that are going on and it's a tough time out here with the strangle and everything, but civil rights cannot be um, violated because of that. So can you tell us uh, what he does for your group and how long he's been with you guys? and? Has he had a, a thorough background check and explain to that to the viewing audience? Sure. All right, Manuel Sanchez, a.k.a. Chino, he's been with us. He's my brother-in-law. He's been volunteering on again, off again for several years with us, working, advocating for victims, translating in Spanish for the victims that don't speak English. Uh, he's, you know, out there struggling. He's getting his GED. He's doing positive rap music. He comes out with us. He's been with us since day one, since the first homicide down in Jasper and Cumberland. And he goes out, comes with us at the press conference that we were invited to by the mayor and the police commissioner. He comes out, he's there, he's standing with me and other activists. The minute he leaves, the press conference over, he leaves, they wind up waiting for him to get away from me and go out there and use what's called vigilante justice on them damn selves, coming out here stopping this guy waiting for it and, and throwing him a good wall with the hands on the guns and threatening to throw him in jail if he don't cooperate. And then he tells them he's out there helping the police, helping the victims, and he's been there from day one. He's got background checks, uh, child abuse clearances. He's been out there, he's been the homicide where we escorted victims to special victims or, or, or possible witnesses to homicide. And this is how the Philadelphia Police Department treats its people who volunteer to be helpful to the police. And I think there was some punk ass fucking shit. If I was there, it would have been some shit. You would have had two press conferences. One, the press conference with the mayor. Another one, some fucking dirty ass bastard cops getting the fucking ass kicked because nobody comes up to my team. And the police department should know that fucking shit from 2003 where they beat the hell out of my brother while he was handcuffed. Don't fuck with my team. If you're gonna fuck, you don't want to return my phone call, Mr. Mayor, uh, Commissioner, you don't want to return my fucking phone call, that's fine. But don't fuck with my people. He's been out here. This is why the young black males in Kensington and the young Latinos aren't forthcoming and coming forward because they come out to help and the police department talks about don't use vigilante justice, but they're quick to violate a young brother of color's rights and threaten them with jail, incarceration, and have their hands on their guns for doing nothing but being law-abiding citizens. This fucking shit can't be here going on. And you know what? You don't want to talk to me because I'm not important enough to fucking call? You can talk to me in front of fucking news cameras in front of the courtroom because this shit ain't going to go undone. Today I talked to at least 25 young, light-skinned males, black and Latino, that fit the general profile of my brother right here. And they told me similar stories where the police department came up Plans on the guns, threw them on the ground, fucking searched the car, searched this, made them, forced them to take swabs. If they didn't cooperate, they were going to throw them in jail for the holidays, and they wouldn't have been released until after Christmas. Now, what kind of fucking shit is that, Mayor? If you want to shit in my defecated fucking Kensington, I'm going to come to your fucking houses, defecate. If this was some black minister group and not young Latino males, this shit, you'd have Al Sharpton down there fucking protesting. If this was white America, upper class white America, you'd have fucking some cracker fabulous motherfucker down here protesting. But it's okay to violate young Latino males in Kensington because you guys don't know what the fuck you're doing. I've been doing crime victim services since the Sunny Sam murders. Been doing it. I've seen the NYPT in their frenzies. I did the DC sniper down there in Washington, DC. I seen that with people running around not knowing what the fuck to do. And you can't violate people's fucking rights. Anyone's got a fucking problem with me, if it's a city official, they got my fucking number because you best I'm gonna reach out to you motherfuckers. Hi, and welcome to the Richie and Tapuna Show. Welcome back, everybody. We know it's been a week and you just had your Richie and Tapuna Show. Withdrawal? Joneses. Yeah, withdrawal Joneses. We're back. Here we are. Here we are. And what we have for you in the local stories is a story about, we'll call, we'll call her the forgotten one, but she's definitely not forgotten here on the show. Right. Allison Edwards. And it just seems that 
she was forgotten about as soon as they found out there was no DNA linked to the Kensington Strangler. But uh, after that, she was just dropped off the face of the earth. But not here. We are acknowledging Allison Edwards, and we have put her on all of our pieces that we've done here on the show and even on the side um, because we do believe she is a victim. Someone murdered her. She had, she was murdered. Well, maybe it wasn't or it was the Kensington Strangler because I don't think the authorities even know who the Kensington Strangler is. Cause I don't think it's a guy in a sketch because that's the guy who the people who were sexually assaulted described. Of course, the people who didn't make it couldn't describe him, but I don't think it's the same man. It's not the same method. Of operation. Well, yeah, he didn't kill them. He didn't make sure they were dead. So we don't know. And not we only that, for sure. not only that, these other victims, uh, Elaine Goldberg, Casey Mahoney, and Nicole Pizzantini, weren't hit in the head with bricks. Right. So it doesn't go along with his mo. Hi, and welcome to the Richie and Tapuna Show. We're here with the legendary Sky Brady and Alexander Oscaritis. How you doing? Good. Welcome. Yeah, we uh, we did a concert in McPherson Square. That's right, and I still <laughs> never got back my extension today, cord. He wants the money back. <laughs> Frankie Veith, yes. where's my is my extension cord? Doesn't forget any. Yeah. I lent you guys them extension cords. What was that 25, 20, 26 years ago? And my dad still asked me today for them back. Well, I want them still back. Have them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a great day, but it got equipment. rained out, unfortunately. Uh, we have two special guests coming in to see us today. That's right, Sonny Velozzi and Robert Bizzik, two local directors and producers. Actually, we'll let them tell it, and here they go. Hi, we're here with Robert Bizzik and Sonny Velozzi of Don't Go There Productions. Okay, so how you doing, guys? Good, good. You want to tell us a little bit about what's going on these days? Let's start with uh, Finders Keepers. What's going on this season with Finders Keepers? Let's explain. Well, we're doing a scene that <laughs> took place at Cheerleaders uh, Gentlemen's Club. And we shot it about a month ago, maybe even more, probably more. About, and, yeah, uh, about a month and a half. And we're very excited about this. We had a lot of people, a lot of actors from uh, Philly, New York, Jersey. Uh, we also have a special guest, Brian Anthony Wilson, who is uh, one of the best actors in the country, I think, and he hails from Philadelphia. Uh, he plays uh, a detective. And frankly, see who plays Big Vince. They have a scene together, and it's at the Gentlemen's Club. And we have a lot of uh, gentlemen that came to volunteer to be oh, with sure. half-naked girls <laughs> for four hours. And it's uh, it's a lot of. Well, we have some good news in this city. What good news can you possibly have? Well, they say that overdose deaths are down. Really? Yeah, from 07 to now, we went from 498 and we're down to 369. So in, in three years, four yeah. years, wow, that's I good. I think that's a pretty good number. I think it's just because the uh, the potency of the dope these days, the economy's even hitting the dope dealers. They got to cut it more, so it's not as good as it used to be. Oh well, I don't really know. They're too chasing much about people that. into the rehabs. Well, I think they said that there's more people entering rehab, and and yeah. that's a good thing. But you don't know because a lot of people say that the drugs are better in rehab. So, this could be, they say it's better in prison also, but I'm saying on the streets, well, I mean. I think the drugs are given more freely in rehab. Okay. So people go for their 29 day stay. They get a warm bed, some hot meals. And hope that the dope's better when they get out? Well, I don't know. I don't know well how it goes, but I know that prescription drugs are just as heavily used these days as street drugs, more right? Often. Yeah, more, more often. Yeah. So, and if it's free, then go take a little stay in rehab. I wouldn't mind a little stay in rehab. So, I've been so, trying to get on that So show. we're advocating drug abuse here? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm advocating rehab, rehabilitation. I, I, I constantly was asking you to call that intervention so I could go to Florida to one of those oh, to rehab. Get a vacation cheap, but right? I have to do something for one whole day and have them follow me around, so. So they call that, a, in the neighborhood, they call that the Kenzo Spons, a 30-day vacation. Yeah, well, yeah. I like it. I'm going. <laughs> Weeks after the arrest of the infamous Kensington Strangler, um, which we follow for, since the beginning, and I don't believe that it's just one. There's, there is several, one or more. But uh, people in Kensington still live in fear in their own homes because of that fact. First of all, since the manhunt has been over, uh, there's not a lot, mo a lot of uh, police presence in the neighborhood. Also, the guardian angels disappeared immediately after the news cameras disappeared. Um, so... 
The neighbors were saying that they wanted more things like Operation Sunrise uh, back in the uh, early 90s to come back and programs like that. Um, which did basically right, uh, he's only linked to three of the cases by DNA and there's a lot more three of the cases by DNA and there's a lot more cases right with it. exactly what happens is uh, I went out on the streets and I interviewed a lot of uh, residents and uh, here's what a few of them had to say We're going around doing the same thing right because uh, he's only linked to three of the cases by DNA so what you saying that they did <laughs> they're not sure you said well well what it is is he's only body? linked he's only linked to three of the cases and there's there's other cases that he's not linked to so there could be more than one yes oh my god please don't tell my kids that so that that's the that's the reaction we want now how do you feel about that about them them telling the residents they can rest easy but actually they didn't solve all the cases so there could be more than one Oh. So is that like a, uh, them giving you like a false sense of security? Because you said that you feel I safe did now. Feel, and my kids felt better because they were making me stay in South Philadelphia with my friend. And when they said they caught him, they let me come home. Well, I think from a lot of the people that we talked to on the streets, even throughout the week, said that they felt safer during those times when there was cops looking for this guy. I mean, there was a lot of girls out there, women, saying, well, I know he's not looking for me because I'm not a young white, white girl, girl on yeah. drugs. Right. And so, you know, I'm just going to work. Um, some of my family had said the same thing. So I think now with the police going, it's kind of like an open forum again, because yeah. with all the other stories that we've done today with, with the, the lots and the, and it all the houses right and this. everything up, this, yeah. this is what led this guy to come to this neighborhood and torture these people. On to a new thing we're gonna do here at Kenzo Real Estate. Uh, we're gonna tell you about some houses that are for sale. So you can get some good buys out there. And we gotta show you the difference four or five blocks makes in the neighborhood. On a 2800 block of Belgrade Street, uh, you can get a two bedroom, one bath for 900 a month. Now, if you're looking to buy on the 1900 block of Somerset Street, which is about five blocks, you can buy the whole house, three bedrooms, one bath for 39.9. If you wanna go five or six blocks east on Somerset Street on the 2600 block of Somerset, you can buy a two bedroom, and you can buy a three bedroom, two bath for 285,000. So what a difference six blocks makes. And here's the, here's the, uh, here's the punchline. Every one of those places you can walk out your front door and look right down the street at Kensington and Somerset, which is the world hub for heroin sales. Right, so why would anybody pay $285,000 for a house on Somerset Street? Well, you got live entertainment day or night. You see the zombies walking up and down the street. That's worth two eighty-five. dollars um, To some people, it may be. I mean, I don't understand how they could charge that much difference. I know a guy in the same that area, even if the house is bigger. That, just day and night if you live there. Is that what all them houses are going for around there? That's what they're going for. That's insane. 15 above, yeah. So and four is blocks it like, away, you can get one for 40000 yeah. Is it like when you go in someone's house and see roaches, they say they don't go in the kitchen, they know better? Yeah, or they have mice only in the basement. Yeah. One mouse. So I guess all the heroin addicts stay up their end. And right, they don't come down there. All right, but on to more serious things. Um, you remember uh, the boy who was uh, murdered when, when we were children, Eric Schunk? Yes. Okay, um, that was 1983, that was about 28 years ago. Yes, today's the anniversary. That's right. That murder. If you remember on the day that that happened, he was said to have left ShopRite at- Shop and Bag. Shop and Bag, right, at 8.26 p.m. It was on camera and that's what the receipt showed. And his mother left her house at 8.30 to go get him because she had told his older brother to walk so him and she found out he didn't. four minutes. Right, and she lived right around the corner. Right. On Ontario Street, right? Westmoreland. Westmoreland. So from those few minutes, he was taken around the railroad. Four minutes, yeah. And Brutally consequently murdered. To death and, and buried in a pile of snow. Right. And I remember uh, me and two other friends of mine, we collected, we raised money um, the next day. 
and we brought it up to uh, his mother's house and we knocked on the door and and she was, you know, just all shook up and everything. But like that's one of the things I do remember that we collected, we raised money, brought a can of money to uh, to the Shunk resident that right was there nice. being West Morning. I think a lot of people raised money for that family at that time. That's that, I guess. But funny thing, never mind, I ain't going there. Never mind. All right, next. Um, they couldn't find Osama bin Laden, but who did they find last week before they found Osama? Who did they find? Oh, they, found they found Richie and Tapuna. Yes, they did. They did a sweep, the scoff law. And I got, that's because they used that Swiffer thing. The sweep. The thing that they, you see the dust fly to it. Yeah, so how did that go? Tell the story. What happened? Well, they came to you my house on the at avenue. six in the morning. And my wife and daughter woke me up and said, Dad, the police are here for you. And I said, ah. Oh. Again? Get my teeth in my hat. I got to go. <laughs> you got your teeth? Yeah. Like you need them in jail? Yeah. Yes. Why? Cause it do. For what? You have to be in front of a judge. I don't want to look like a fucking Kenzo in front of the judge. Just in case somebody thought you were cute in jail, you could get your. No, nah, there was only there was only a few people in there. The, the, about five people that got picked up. And you knew well, them three all? people. No, but uh, you know they were in. We they went to their houses and picked them up. Wish I had that on camera. I forget their names, but the you know the one kid lived on Willard Street. The one guy. You're out in people. So what? Dirty rat. The one guy lived to, his name's Jamal, he sells uh, clothes and stuff at 60th and more, or 70th and Chestnut, or 60th and Chestnut. Uh, so stop down and see him. Tell him Richie you sent you. All right. So they did a sweep <laughs> in March. They're getting really good at this. They're like, they're doing them consecutively, I guess. For, sorry, I just hit my mic. Um, if I had known that, I wouldn't have been there in April. Right, Wait a minute. You'd have been hiding out. Oh, yeah, April. It was it's April. May now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they had... 32 people in March they, they got for about 500 tickets, which totaled about 120,000. And yours alone are probably like 120,000 too, right? So. Nah. I, well, I would like to thank the police officers who, who arrested me, um, Officer Wa uh, Walters and McMahon. Yeah. And there were two other ones, but they didn't say their names. But They were cool? Thanks. That was, that was, yeah, they didn't handcuff me in front of my wife and kid. Oh, that's sweet. Did they go through the drive through at McDonald's and get you something to eat? No, but listen, I got to tell this story. It's funny. We're going to the second guy, or the fourth guy's house, and we turn the corner, and he's got this big, there's this big sign on a, uh, a minivan that says, vote for, I don't even know the fucking lady's name, for a traffic court judge. And I said, I will bet you that we're going to that motherfucking person's house. And it was him. The guy comes to the car after they're, they're, they arrested him, and they're putting him in the van with me, and he's like, Look, I even got the sign on my van. I said, I fucking knew it. So he gets he in. Call her? He gets in, right? And I'm like, I bet you ain't fucking voting for her now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Have to get her name. Yeah, I forget her name. I don't know. Well, so enough about criminals around the world. Okay. What else is going on? What else is going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. In the sky, use a little cloud, asking to remember all the good things I did, trying to forget the bad ones I hid. I ain't being humble, and it's hard to be kind when you're trapped in this true world with a love like yours and mine. Last day of summer. Last day of summer Babe, it's the last day of summer Make it last Well, some people wonder Why I trade my soul One last shot To play some rock and roll Something inside me won't let me rest Just and tall 
with the very best I wish you could be here For all the times I tried I don't think your daddy Would understand why Last day of summer Last day of summer Babe, it's the last day of summer And the big house Use a little clout I know it's fine power And I don't think it's fair If I can't have you now I'll lose you on the way there I wish you could be here For all the times I try I don't think your daddy Would understand why Last day of summer Yeah, it's the last Day of summer, baby, it's the last day of summer. Make it last, 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 make it last. This is Kensington, a neighborhood in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's where I grew up. When I grew up here, this neighborhood was full of industry and jobs. No vacant houses, no empty lots. Everyone looked after their neighbors by way of anything as little as a cup of sugar or a glass of milk. All that's going now, and in place of neighbors are vacant lots full of trash and used drug paraphernalia. So basically, the people aspect of the neighborhood is just about diminished. And there's only a very small percentage of people left here from when I was a child. But they are here, so let's not forget about it. Kensington, Philly, PA is where I'm from. What? Where you can get killed. Yes, from a gun. What? Or get stabbed up. All in your lungs. Yeah. Kensington, Kensington, that's where I'm uh -huh. from. Kensington, Philly, PA is where I'm from. What? Where you can get killed. Yes, from a gun. What? Or get stabbed up. All in your lungs. Yeah. Kensington, Kensington, that's where I'm from. Uh -huh. Where I'm from. Hey. Bodies drop all day. Yeah. Kensington is crazy. Forget LA. I done seen it in front of my eyes. In front of my face Heard of all people getting tired of born in their place All the snitches calling the cops to crack a case All the ones you warden up, guess the drug place All little kids carrying a lot of hate Damn it, I done seen it all I done seen the great man rise and fall Go to the top, then hit the floor Then come back and pick themselves up the floor Some don't make it back cause they don't wanna live no more On these Philly streets, yeah they all real some my addicts and some do deal Just to get a drug or get a good meal you know. So if you from Kenzo, you know how I feel Kensington, Philly, PA is where I'm from Where you can get killed, yes, from a gun